stadium at Chan. The Yanks weren't left wanting for hitting last year. They scored more runs than any team in all of baseball. The catalyst, Ricky Henderson. Rick the Quick used his speed and his hitting to set the table for the Yankee sluggers to clean up. He's coming off a year that saw him lead the league in stolen bases and in run scored. Seeing it was your first season in New York last year and the numbers that you put on the board, you have to feel real good about that, don't you? I feel great about it. I went to New York. I think a lot of people that when I was playing with Oakland doubted me on probably playing as well as I played for New York. They doubted me that, you know, when you go to the Big Apple, you go to New York, a lot of ball players go there. They seem to not play to their potential because of the pressure they had. And I think, you know, I survived over the pressure and did the things that I wanted to do. So I'm just proud of what I did. Don Mattingly saw Henderson make a lot of things happen last season. And that's one of the reasons why Mattingly led the major leagues in RBI. Mattingly's success over the past two years has some folks comparing him with Yankee greats of the past like DiMaggio, Garrick, and Mantle. You try to live up to something that's just too big, I think, to me, and I just want to go out and, and be the best player I can be for 162 games. Mattingly was the best player in the league last year. In his two full seasons as the Yankees' first baseman, number 23 has been number one at his position. Mattingly's success formula? Confident. I love playing, I think, number one. I enjoy what I'm doing. Uh, I, I work very hard uh, at what I do. I'm very confident, I think. Uh, not, not in an outwardly way. I don't talk about what I can do. I basically, uh, when I go on the field, I feel like I'm as good as anybody. Dave Winfield believes if he batted third, he'd have the kind of stats Mattingly had. But Winfield batting fourth. At six foot, six inches tall, and 220 pounds, Winfield has the build of a cleanup hitter. I still don't feel I'm the classic slugger, you know, the big brute that comes up there swinging for the home run or nothing. You know, I still don't strike out a lot. I might strike out 70 times during the course of the year, which is a good percentage for a cleanup hitter. But my job, I feel, is to get on base, knock in runs, whatever way I can. And it's, it may not always be with the three run dinger, as they say, but I'm going to get the runs in. Reggie once said that he was the straw that stirs the drink. Will you ever say that? Will you ever be the straw that stirs the drink? Look at the statistics. Look at the contribution. Call it what you want. I don't have to say anything. It's just numbers speak for themselves. And talk to the other players. If they like who I play and what I mean to the club, you have to ask them. The Yankees appear to be solid at every position. Co-captain Willie Randolph can still turn the double play and still deliver timely hit. At shortstop, Bobby Meacham's glove is adequate, but the Yanks want more from his bat. Over at third, Mike Pagliarulo believes he has what it takes to be the everyday third baseman. He hit 19 homers last year and expects more this season. Are you capable of hitting 25, 26? I think so. You know, a lot of people say, uh, you know, how about your goals and stuff like that. I, I think um, uh, I've always hit uh, some home runs, and I think my, uh, my strength is driving in runs, playing good defense. If Pags is unable to be effective against left-handers, Dale Barra will see a lot of action at third. Left field will be another platoon position for the Yankees. Gary Renneke, acquired in a trade with the Orioles, will hit against the left-handers, and Ken Griffey will hit against the right-handers. They will also compete for the DH job along with the newly acquired Mike Eastwood. Behind the plate are Butch Weinerger, the starter, and Ron Hassey, his backup. They'll handle a pitching staff that some critics believe is past its prime. Come on, old timer. I'll be back in about two, about five minutes. Oh, man, I got the clock on you. never make it. The clock ran out on Phil Negro a week and a half ago. The Yankees cut the 47-year-older. Negro won 16 games last year, but this time around, the Yankees felt Phil could no longer get the job done. His brother Joe took the news hard, but he claims he'll still give his all for New York. The Yankees are hoping for about 16 victories from Joe Negro. You can do the job and fly every five days and sit well and, and keep your club in the ball game. You know, that's, that's what they ask you to do. So if this is 20, 22 or 40, what makes a difference? The ace of the staff, as usual, is Louisiana Lightning. Ron Guidry doesn't throw as fast as he once did. What he still can do, though, is win. Despite winning 20 games last year, Guidry doesn't consider himself the ace of the Yankee staff. I know my role that I'm supposed to play because every year they count on you to do so much. And, that, you know, that's that's a compliment. There's no real aces on the staff. All you got on the staff is a bunch of experienced guys that love to play the game that play the win. 
Ed Whitson won't have to worry about Billy Martin this season, and that may be just what Whitson needs to be the pitcher the Yankees expected him to be when they signed him last year as a free agent. The starters may not be the best group in baseball, but the bullpen could be. Dave Rigetti and Brian Fisher give the Yankees a powerful lefty-righty combination. I don't know if it's the best, but it's unusual. You don't see that in Major League Baseball. You don't see two guys in the bullpen that can throw the ball like like Dave and I do. We had guys that were content being long relievers, and uh, so we were all happy down there. Fisher was happy with his job, and I was definitely happy with mine. And Maybe that's why we worked so well together, and we did pitch well. 